Thank you. It's always nice to, to be here. Uh, really started by um, raising the parallels between the Communist Party and uh, organised religion. And remind me of when the Berlin Wall collapsed. The, in, in Dublin, the Communist Party of Ireland, open bracket, Marxist Leninist, close bracket, lest it be confused with any other Communist Party, <laughs> had, a, um, had a poster up around town for a public meeting with the snappy title. Following the collapse of the revisionist traitor regimes in Eastern Europe, hail the success of genuine socialism in Albania. <laughs> <laughs> that was the title on the poster. So it shows that, I mean, secular ideas can have the same problems with faith and dogma, as, uh, as well as organisation, as, as can religious organisations. But the difference is that when secular organisations base their activities on faith and dogma, eventually the faith and dogma bump into reality and you notice that it's not working, whereas religion hides its testability in an imaginary afterlife and, and it's a kind of an artificial way of, of, of prolonging itself because of that. Uh, the, the, the motion tonight, we should welcome the end of organised religion. I'm suggesting we should welcome it for two reasons. Firstly, because organised religion is harmful in itself. And secondly, because the end of organised religion would be evidence that our society is becoming safer, happier, and healthier. Uh, the reason I'm going to suggest that uh, organised religion is harmful in itself is because it corrupts our sense of reality and it corrupts our sense of morality and all of the good that it seems to cause are actually caused by things associated with religion that can be done just as effectively without religion. And secondly, if we look at the evidence of the World Value Survey, which is a team of interdisciplinary social scientists that has been studying human values over the last few decades, what they are finding is that throughout the world, a consistent pattern that as individual people move from survival values along a scale towards self-expression values, which is typically triggered by investment in health and education and communications technology and moves towards democracy and perceived self-control over your life, that societies then start to move away from traditional religious values and towards secular rational values because religion is typically historically a response to hardship. Typically the more, uh, the, the worse your life is, the more likely you are to be religious. That's the pattern around the, the world. In, in a debate uh, in Oxford I did a couple of years ago, one of the speakers put it fairly well, he said that, that, that if your life is like going to a restaurant where the meals are consistently terrible. Religion is what convinces you that if you eat the meal anyway, the dessert will be brilliant. <laughs> but the dessert never arrives. So I'm not arguing that a world without religion, by the way, I'm not arguing that a world without religion would cause society to be happier and healthier. What I'm arguing is that a world without religion would be evidence that those changes have already happened because as societies move in that direction, religion loses its, its hold because people no longer need the artificial comfort of religion and people can start to do good because it's good rather than because some imaginary God is telling them to. I'm going to ask three questions and, 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 and hopefully answer them here. First, how does religion corrupt our sense of reality? And the reason religion corrupts our sense of reality is that it encourages us to believe implausible assertions based on faith, and by faith I mean believing things because you want to believe it, you don't say I have faith that I'll be hit by a car when I cross the road, and it's believing things disproportionately to the currently best available evidence. And that's why I would disagree with you, John, that, that um, atheism is, is a position of faith. Atheism is not a position of faith because it's proportionate to the evidence. There is very little evidence that gods exist, and there's considerable evidence that humans <laughs> invented the idea of gods. And most atheists I know would quite happily say, if we got evidence that there's God, oh, we were mistaken. We've no vested interest in there being no, no God. Um, and the reason that it corrupts our sense of reality is, is that normally, here, here's the way normally, if, if, if somebody says something to you, you're trying to figure out whether you believe it's true or not, uh, you compare it to the evidence. And, and as the claims become more and more implausible, you raise the bar of the evidence that you need in order to to believe it. But with religion you do the opposite. As the claims become more implausible, you lower the bar of the evidence that you require to believe it. Um, and and, and in, in fact, you lower it to the, to the extent that you would believe, religion encourages to believe, not merely 
implausible claims, but literally untestable claims, and then asked us to, to live our lives and to encourage others to live their lives on the basis of these untestable claims. But religion also makes explicit, testable claims about the natural world as opposed to the imaginary supernatural world. And wherever it makes those claims and they're tested, it typically loses. Religion tells us that miracles happen in the natural world, and we know that they don't. Religion tells us that Jesus rose from the dead, and we know that people don't rise from the dead. Religion tells us that Muhammad flew on a winged horse, and we know that there are no winged horses. Religion tells us that people are possessed by demons, including the current Pope who's just uh, endorsed an organisation of exorcists a couple of months ago. And we know that those people have mental illnesses. Religion tells us that humans, and only humans, have immortal souls, and we know that humans are just one species of animal on a planet as mortal as the other species of animals on the planet. Religion tells us that evolution either doesn't exist or does exist but is guided by God, whereas we know that one of the core aspects of evolution is that it's not guided by anything. Religion tells us that prayer works, and many studies have shown, including one particularly comprehensive one, that, uh, that not only does prayer not work, but that if you know that you're being prayed for, that you have greater complications when recovering from open heart surgery. Religion tells us that religion is good for society. And we know that secular democracies are better in many quality of life indexes than <coughs> religious states. And when religion eventually has to accept that it's wrong on these testable issues of fact, typically what it does is it has to spend a great amount of intellectual energy trying to crowbar this new fact to make it consistent with their sacred texts. Because um, they can't just say, like, like normal, rational people, oh, those guys got it wrong 2,000 years ago. They have to twist the meanings of the word and say, oh, you have to read it in the original Arabic, or you have to, oh, whatever, in order to make these nonsensical claims consistent with what we now know about reality. Or something, that they're just denied that their psychic book says what, what it says. I had two debates recently on radio, one with Ali Saleem on BBC, where I told, reminded him that the Quran says that a husband can beat his wife, and he denied it that it was in the Quran. And it, but it is, it's in Surah 434. I was in another debate a few days after that with Michael Kelly, the editor of the Irish Catholic newspaper. I reminded him that in the Bible, Jesus says that Jews are of their father, the devil. He denied that that was in the Christian Bible, but it is, it's in John 8, 44. So religion corrupts even the sense of reality of religious people about their own sacred text. The second point I'm gonna make is, is, is how does religion corrupt our sense of morality? And the reason it corrupts our sense of morality is that morality is essentially a function of our brains. Uh, it, it's evolved in the brains of social animals because cooperation um, and competition are both useful for survival. And in recent generations, through, through our, our evolution of, of reason, um, we've refined our sense of morality and we increasingly uh, respect individual conscience and personal rights and the rights of non-human animals. And it's already hard enough in trying to implement that to balance all of the different aspects of, of compassion and empathy and cooperation and reciprocity and fairness and justice. It's hard enough to do that anyway without religion corrupting it by adding in these invented supernatural commands that say that even so, if something is the compassionate thing to do, you're not to do it because somebody wrote it in a book 2,000 years ago. And religion insists that our natural morality is trumped by this. It's trumped by what some people believe that the creator of the universe is telling them to enforce on the rest of us. Um, if we look at some examples, and, and particularly, by the way, in this context, the Abrahamic faiths have, have a, a particularly bad record in, in, in respecting women. I mean, typically, their, their texts are about protecting the, uh, the position of, of adult males in the tribes where the, where the, um, where the texts were written. And, and I notice here, by the way, as well, that this, is, this is the second debate to bring it up to text and out of religion. This is the second debate in a week that where all the speakers have been male. And it's, it's kind of really unusual because we, because we were getting away from that for the last few years and it's starting to, to, anyway, that's a different issue. But if we look at some of the things in, in that examples of what the Bible says and what the Quran says, Jesus in the Bible says that uh, Jews are of their father the devil. I've already mentioned that. The Bible also says that a woman should be stoned to death for not being a virgin on her wedding night. Jesus says that, that he would kill the children of Jezebel for the sins of their mother. The Quran says that husbands can beat their wives. The Quran says that uh, a woman's evidence is worth half that of a man. The Quran says 
that a woman can only inherit half of what a man ca uh, can. Uh, they, they, they also, the Bible also con contains a whole load of just ethical nonsense. Uh, here's some of my favourites. God says that he will bring so much evil that it will make your ears tingle. <laughs> he says he will smite you with hemorrhoids and an unhealable sore botch. <laughs> he will make you eat the flesh of your own children. That's, by the way, if you don't obey the Ten Commandments. That's the section that that's in. And uh, he will make you, this is my favourite, he will make you so fearful that you will flee even when nobody is chasing you. I like that. <laughs> Um, so not only is religion not needed for morality, religion actively corrupts our morality. Michael, you have two more minutes. Okay. Uh, and any good that religion seems to uh, cause is actually caused by things associated with religion, things like a sense of community, a sense of meaning, absorption of activities, but they can all be achieved without religion. Finally, I want to touch on how do we know that secular societies are safer and happier and healthier? And there's various studies that show this. A lot of really good research on that. The, the most comprehensive is a 2009 study by Phil Zuckerman, who's a social scientist. Just look it up. But that plus other um, uh, research shows, in terms of attitudes, atheists and secularists are less nationalistic, less prejudiced, less anti-Semitic, less racist, less dogmatic, less ethnocentric, less closed-minded, less authoritarian. In political terms, we're more politically tolerant, more supportive of gender equality, abortion rights, gay rights, less supportive of the death penalty, less supportive of prison as retribution, less supportive of government torturing uh, terrorist suspects, and the more deeply religious you are, the more supportive you are likely to be of torture. In terms of crime, atheists are more likely to commit certain types of minor crime, like underage drinking and illegal drug use, but the murder rate is lower in secular countries. In terms of altruism, different studies have different results, uh, but secular countries certainly give more aid to poorer countries than to religious countries. In terms of family life, atheists and secularists, lower divorce rates, lower family size, foster a questioning attitude in children rather than obedience and are less likely to support corporal punishment. Another very important issue in terms of, of altruism, two studies of the Holocaust showed that the more secular a person was, the more likely they were to help Jews during the Holocaust. Um, in terms of depression and anxiety, worse in strongly religious countries, uh, atheists are least anxious about dying. Uh, in terms of, of sex, um, atheists are less likely to buy online pornography and most child pornography, rape pornography and bestiality pornography is downloaded from Islamic countries. Atheists typically have less sexually transmitted disease infection rates and less teen pregnancy rates because virginity pledges lead to unprotected sex rather than to no sex. So to summarise, Religion wants us to live our lives on the basis that a supreme being created a universe of 100 billion galaxies, each of which has 100 billion stars like our sun, so that he could tell one member of one species on one planet that he will stone him to death if he gathers sticks on the Sabbath, and then he impregnates a virgin in order to give birth to himself, give Muhammad a ride on a winged horse, and appears in Joseph Smith's hat in order to attire him with magic underpants. And on the basis of absurdities like that, Asiya Bibi is today languishing in a prison cell in Pakistan, a Christian woman, waiting to be hanged for allegedly blaspheming against Muhammad. So religion corrupts our sense of reality, it corrupts our sense of morality, and there is considerable reliable evidence that secular societies are safer, happier and healthier and on that basis I ask you to support the motion. Thank you very much.